on August 16, 1960, long before man had set foot on the moon, military pilot Joe Kittinger took a solo journey to explore the heavens. Not in a rocket, but in a giant helium balloon to determine the risks of high altitude bailouts from air or spacecraft. The balloon took Kittinger over 19 miles into the stratosphere. That's twice the height that I reached. Then Kittinger did something astonishing. He jumped. This is the actual moment. He fell to Earth, reaching a speed of almost 620 miles an hour. And yet he had no sense of speed. I had no ripple of the, of the fabric, uh, my pressure suit, and I, I, it was a very weird sensation. I had no, uh, no visual reference on anything, so I, I thought I was really suspended in space. Kittinger had fallen at great speed as he plunged towards the troposphere, thick with clouds floating over a New Mexico desert. Finally, he opened his parachute. His jump remains the longest free fall in history. Just 15 minutes after he jumped, Kittinger was back on the ground. Falling from the upper reaches of the stratosphere, Kittinger had plummeted through 99% of the atmosphere's mass. 15 minutes before I'd been at the edge of space, and now, to me, I was in the Garden of Eden. We really don't appreciate what a beautiful planet we have. Although Kittinger had jumped from high in the stratosphere, he still didn't reach the furthest edge of our atmosphere. Above the stratosphere are more protective layers, so wispy and tenuous that they barely exist, but are vital for our planet. About 30 miles beyond the stratosphere lies the third layer, the mesosphere. It's this layer that helps protect us from meteors. When we see a shooting star, it's actually a meteor burning up high in the atmosphere. The mesosphere is also home to a strange phenomenon called noctilucent clouds. They're thin, wispy clouds that can only be seen in the summer at high latitudes. Beginning at nearly 50 miles high, there's the fourth layer, the thermosphere. Here, the atmosphere is so thin that beyond 50 miles, we approach the beginnings of space. The Space Shuttle orbits the Earth in the thermosphere. It's also where nitrogen and oxygen interact with the Sun's lethal solar wind, creating the aurora around the Earth's poles. There is another way of looking at the atmosphere. If you could unwrap the atmosphere from the surface of the Earth and put it all into a ball, this is what it would look like. Its weight is equal to a layer of water 34 feet deep covering the Earth. The layer that we spend our lives in, the troposphere, is just a narrow band. 
It's a finely balanced mixture of different gases essential for life. But it also has a physical presence. To understand the troposphere we live in, you have to think of it not just as gases, but as a fluid. In effect, we live at the bottom of an ocean of air. Just like water, air has turbulence. These clouds are formed as the air creates eddy currents flowing around the tips of mountains. Tornado.